Good evening, I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Welcome to Consider This, the show where we want you to consider and reconsider what you know of the news of the day. Tonight on the show, we have the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Datuk Sri Nancy Shukri. Welcome to the show, Datuk Sri. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so, over the next half an hour, we're going to focus on the tourism and arts industry. But before we get to that, because it's going to be a long conversation, I do want to ask you though, as a member of the Perikata National Plus GPS government, um, and also a member of cabinet, uh, we'd first kind of like to get your thoughts on the decision to limit Dewan Rakyat, uh, the Dewan Rakyat sitting to a single day. Datuk Sri, what do you think about this move? Well, actually, we have been discussing about it, quite lengthy discussion, because we need to consider a lot of things. Especially during that time, May 18 is still going to be MCO. Okay? Well, maybe they're going to extend. I'm, I may be wrong. It's, uh, it's still going, we are still going to practice uh, social distancing and also having all those uh, other, other compliance with the SOPs for MCO. Uh, I'm not so sure whether during that time they're still going to be NC MCO because it's just being announced that it's going to be up to the 12th of May. But um, having said that, we still have to comply. Then therefore, we have to comply with the social distancing. And uh, 222 MPs in the day one, we have to, um, we have, to have a gap uh, between one chair from before another one uh, to sit there. So um, some of the MPs will have to sit behind at the back. So no officers, no government officers are, are allowed to come in uh, because we, we do not want to encourage um, many people together. So therefore, um, it, is, um, it is legally right to do so. Uh, that is having it for one day. Uh, um, Dr. Sri, can I interject here though? You know, we yep. know in uh, several parliaments around the world, including Britain, on which Malaysia is modelled, yep. uh, they have found uh, and used innovation to overcome the problem. Uh, and more importantly, uh, as, as former law minister as well, I mean, the question of uh, this, you know, the most august house for the discussion of lawmaking as well as a discussion of the government of the day's priorities, yep. how, uh, you know, budgets are being used. Aren't you worried that this will set a dangerous precedent, considering well, it's possible to actually have parliament as other countries have demonstrated? Yeah, yeah. Well, well it, it is possible to do so. But I think for this time, it's going to be just a one-day uh, session uh, for reason of what had been discussed, which I cannot disclose here. But of course, um, we are going to have another session whereby actually on that day, there will be three bills to be passed. Uh, but uh, three bills to be, um, it's not to be passed, but they're going to, um, they're going to uh, table three bills for the first, first reading, okay? But there has to be second reading. But this one is to comply with at least, we have to, do, we have to call for this um, session at least before the 60 days end. So, um, what, what you have asked earlier on, there is a possibility that that will be our, our uh, you know, we can use uh, maybe like the future, uh, the other countries, they can go online, you know, we, can, we might be able to do that in the future, but I think uh, that is something that we need to work out now. Uh, because I think before this, we're not really prepared for that. But uh, I don't see any problem with that to happen in the future. Because if the next time we, we, we see the situation is still the same, then therefore we need to do we, we need to uh, go online. We use uh, virtual, virtual uh, sitting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, mm. thank you for addressing that uh, with yeah. us on the show tonight. Let's move on to the tourism industry and the collapse due to COVID-19. Most of us understand that the pandemic has hit the tourism industry hard, but perhaps out of you might have more insight into the hidden effects of COVID. Talk us through some of the, uh, not just the obvious and visible impact, but also some of the hi hidden and overlooked impact. Well, actually, uh it's already known, uh, known that um, tourism is the worst hit uh, industry. And then we are the contributor, the third contributor to, to our economy, about 15.3% from tourism. And now um, we have, from January to March, we have lost about 9.9 .9 billion ringgit. Uh, and then very soon it will be worse than that because um, this is the peak of where the, this COVID-19 had been 
hitting us all. Um, what we have seen now, a lot of them um, have been complaining about losing their jobs. Uh, those who are asked to go on unpaid leave and then the government has come in to assist. Now what is it that is, um, uh, that is unseen at the moment is um, some of the, the proposals that we made under, under um, the, the ministry itself, under MOTEC itself, which is not seen yet, which we are already considering to assist the people because we see that um, not only those who are working like the tour, tourist guides or, or the tour operators, the travel agencies, not only them being affected but the families of these people are also affected. So these are what we have not been able to see and the government, uh, through, through, the, through the government they're helping out using the stimulus package but as MOTEC we are also considering uh, quite a number of things, a number of initiatives through our tourism um, uh, uh, recovery action plan. Uh, there is, um, we have already established this tourism recovery action committee to consider the various plans. Uh, first, we want to use this uh, opportunity to also conduct training, okay, to enhance training for uh, for tourist um, tourist guides and also tourism um, industries like uh, tourist uh, travel agencies and also tour operators. We want them to enhance their training, uh, their their tra their services through um, online because this is the time when they have to build uh, a new a new um, uh, a new site of tourism they need to relook into how they're going to market uh, tourism industry now apart from that we also have um, some incentives which have not also been been uh, we are still waiting for approval we are considering to exempt them from paying license, okay? A license, so that this is something to lighten their burden. Uh, um, Dr. Sri, could you help us understand, in terms of the recovery plan, uh, how long is the timeline for the recovery plan? Uh, you know, many of the uh, elements of the Prihatin package were yeah. limited in terms of time, you know, two months, three months, six months. Uh, with your recovery plan, what are you looking at? A year, year and a half? Well, uh, we don't go beyond six months yet, okay? From there, we will work out again because now it is more for immediate ones because we want to help the people immediately. Now, this is, um, this is up to six months only for, uh, for, for us to assist them. We have matching grants for them. Uh, we have uh, matching grants for, for the tour, tourism industry themselves. We have two types of matching grants. One is um, um, Galakan Melanchong Malaysia. We, we want them to, to, um, to travel in the country. And at the same time, we want them. We also give um, grants, okay, grants to those who support the um, the tourism and also um, our, uh, our culture and also um, arts arts um, industry. So, um, and we also we are also helping out to to promote by by uh, we are now trying to strengthen the economy by using um, Chuti Chuti Malaysia again. Uh, this is through our tourism um, Malaysia. All right. yeah. That's a really interesting uh, point that you brought up. We're going to talk a little bit about this pivot to domestic tourism, mm -hmm. the Chuti Chuti Malaysia pivot. Uh, but that's all coming up in the next, uh, just in a couple of minutes on Consider This. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.